All right, back here with part two of my top five Rescue Ranger episodes. We're in the top four now. Number four, dirty, rotten diapers. That's right, dirty, rotten diapers. I mean, what can you not say about this episode that has not been said? I mean, people just love this episode because it's kind of like, it shows Gadget's got like two sides to her. A side that's basically like, you know, maybe we need to take a break from the violence. Maybe we need to find an easier way, find a kinder, safer way. You kind of, it's basically like that motherly instinct coming out of her, if you will. And that motherly instinct, even though she's not like a mother, but it's more like that motherly instinct. I, I love how that comes out of her. But then I also love at the end, or towards the end of the episode, where it's like, after all, after, after basically having the biggest test of this new, safer and kinder uh, method fail and blow up in her face, I love how, you know, she just says, you know what, enough's enough. I've had it, you know, let's throw this whole new method of mine out the window, it's time to kick some ass. I, I love that, I, lo I love how they do that. Um, the, only, the, only problem I, the only problem I have with this episode is the fact that they, they cut out, once in the, in the broadcast, like on Toon Disney and later broadcasts in syndication, they cut out the, this one line where she says, let's shake that baby till he rubs. Um, in the DVD version, they keep the scene, but they have the dialogue changed around. Like, they had Trish McNeil basically come in and redo the dialogue and said, let's shake that rook till he rebels, or something like that. But you can tell that they had to come in and redo the line because the voice sounds a little deeper at times. But it's a very, very fun episode. I love it. It's, it it'll make you laugh from almost beginning to end. It'll really, it'll really make you, you know, bust the gut in some scenes. Uh, and it's only, it's also the only episode, uh, I'll say this, it's the only episode where Gadget actually kisses uh, Chip on the cheek without wearing no disguise and anything. It's the first time she's ever done that. It's the first episode. And if you're a pro G&C fan, that kind of teased that as well. But again, but again, that was, like I said, that's the only time she's ever done it. But a very fun episode, very comedic, very well-timed in the comedic spots and definitely worth the wa watch. De definitely worth the watch. Check it out. I highly, highly recommend it. All right, number three. My number three episode is A Fly in the Ointment. Now, this is very good. This is actually a pretty good episode because it's an, basically it's one of those episodes focused on Zipper and how Zipper feels he can't and basically, Zippo wants to contribute more. He, you know, even though he looks small and everything, he wants to say, hey, look, just because I'm small, my size shouldn't matter, I can contribute. And of course, it's an episode that, the episode's villain is Norton Nimnal, so you can kind of guess what goes from there. But if not, what happens is Norton, is that, what happens is Nimnal creates this new kind of transporting device that he, transporting helmet, which all he has to do is put like a phone, one of those old, cord like a phone, like, um, well, not, not like today's phone, but a cordless phone. All he has to do is like take a phone like this, well, back then a cord phone, a, you know, one of the original phones, cord, a cord, with a cord, put it on top of the helmet, dial the number, and get out of there. Nowadays, if you used to, if you used to use a, um, a cell phone or a phone like that, He'd have to basically dial the number and then put it on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what happened basically is by transporting Zippo along with him, they kind of switched bodies and everything. So, a really hilarious scene. Uh, it was kind of very funny to see that. And I love how they finally got Nimno. And I guess in a way, the, the writers and the creators figured this was the only Nim way, the only way Nimno would finally be able to communicate with the Rangers. Because even though he'd recognize them, it'd be the first time he's ever communicated with them. And like, holy crap, basically it'd, it'd make him think, holy crap, no wonder these, these rodents have always beaten me, have always foiled my plans. They're intelligent. So, it, it's really cool. And the funniest moments, so, all the funniest moments are towards the end, when the rangers themselves have to use the helmet to get inside uh, a military base where Zipper might be, was possibly going to be doing experiments on Zipper. 
And the funniest moments come out because come out after that because what happens is just like Zipper, they, they too end up switching bodies. But and here's what's funny about it though, and I um, I give credit to whoever wrote this episode. But basically what happens is when they switch bodies, Chip's head ends up on Monterey's body, Monty's head ends up on Chip's body, and then you can only guess what happens to Dale and Gadget. <laughs> and it really, it really cracks me up because I like how Gadget acknowledges, kind of asks Dale, like, wait a minute, why am I wearing your shirt? And then Dale was like looking at her like, you're wearing more than just my shirt. <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of cool. And then, I like how Gadget has to use a use one of those little uh, cups, the little uh, water cups, you know, that you can just throw away like that, that you can just crumble up like that and just throw away. I like how she has to put that over herself as a dress to cover her back, cover her bottom side. And I like how after she does that, Dale's like, oh dear, oh dear, dear. I've always wanted to be close to Gadget, but not this close. In other words, he's saying, look, I've always wanted to have Gadget as my girl, but I don't want to have it like this. And Gadget comes up to him and says, hands off, keep the hands off the body. Like, hey, you may have my body, but keep my hands off it. <laughs> you know? Or something like that. I mean, it's just hilarious. It's just hilarious. And I, and I also love at the end where, you know, Chip, well, not Chip, but Gadget and Nimnol are trying to repair the helmet. helmet and Gadget's trying to probably offer some help or advice. And Nimnol's like, hey, look, I'm the scientist, you're the mouse, but out. But then in the end, it's like almost at the last second. Okay, and it's like they have to get out of there. Gadget just takes um, a paper clip, takes a paper clip, and puts it in there in the place it needs to go, and there you go. <laughs> I mean, it's real funny, and when they do get restored, uh, I love Dale's interaction there with Gadget. He's like, when she gets her body back and she's happy about it, he's like, uh, Dale's like, yeah, and it looks much better on you. <laughs> Uh, but it's really, really fun. Uh, I really liked it, and it was just again, just like Dirty Rotten Diapers, and the, it, just like Dirty, Dirty Rotten Diapers, it was a very, very fun episode. You definitely have to check it out. It's worth the while. It's worth sitting there. It's just a great, fun episode. The number two, Good Times and Bad Times, or well, Good Times, Bad Times, the debut of possibly one of the most popular if not the most popular one-shot Rescue Ranger character in the history of the franchise, Fox Glove Bat. A great episode. There's not, not, more to, not, not much more you can say about it. Uh, basically, Dale is a little bit more acceptive of, of Fox Glove's affections. He even goes as far later on in the episode as calling her Foxy. You know, to kind of acknowledge that, there might be, that he's finally kind of had an attraction towards her. Kind of basically he's retaining the attraction and the feelings, so it's a really great development episode. It's really great character development for a one-shot character. So, but it's really fun, and it shows that Dale, basically unlike Chip, is more acceptive and more willing to possibly give somebody who has a crush on him, who has feelings for him, a chance at at a relationship. I really, really like that. I really like that uh, that episode. I really like how that's done. Um, but yeah, and, and you know what, she's, like I said, she proved to not to be, and out of this, like I said, she became not just the most popular Windshot character in the franchise's history, but she, and later on, with ten, later on in the uh, eight issues of Bo that Boom Studios, uh, in the eight issues that Boom Studio Comics released, she, her popularity proved to be, her popularity proved to be huge enough, along with Tammy's, that they both made returns in the comic. Fox Club more than Tammy, and we even got a little background on Fox Club in the comic, so that was pretty cool. And then Tammy, we find out what happened with her. She becomes a nurse, just like in, just like in the Mice and Mayhem, which is pretty cool. So, uh, but yeah, just great episode, and really introduced a great one-shot character whose popularity really just took off like nobody could ever expect. So definitely, number two, good times, bad times. The number one, the number one episode, my number one favorite episode of all time, Double O Chipmunk. I mean, where, 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 can I, where, where do I begin with Double O Chipmunk? I have said this multiple times at the Acorn Cafe at ChippendaleOnline.com. 
just everywhere that this is possibly my favorite episode of all time. That this is indeed my favorite episode of all time. And the reason being is because it's, it's full of a lot of firsts for the Rangers. It is. It's the first time we actually see an intelligent side to Dale. Dale wanted to contribute to the team, really contribute by saying, hey, look, if we could do what my favorite spy hero on television can do, we'd be even better. We'd even be more awesome. We'd be even more, more than what we are now. And I love seeing that. I love how they made that character development come out of Dale. Like, there's more to him than just the goofiness, the goof-offness, and the, and the silliness, and the comic book reading, and the laziness. I love that. And I love how Gadget is willing to go out of her way to help him live that dream. I like how when she, you know, when she kind of sheds a little tears after seeing all the hard work he put into what he wanted, into, into his suit, into his spy suit, I like when she kind of sheds those tears. She's like, you know what? If Dale wants to live this dream, if Dale wants to be a secret agent, I'm going to help him. I love that. I love that. I love how she's willing to go out of her way to do that and even get Monterey and Chip to help out out of guilt, I believe. Making him realize, look, Dale was just trying to help us. I, and probably, maybe she knows how he feels. She, well, not probably, but, she probably, but I'm, I have a feeling she knows. I've always had this feeling that she knows how Dale's feeling. So she probably went to Chip and Dale, not Chip and Dale, <laughs> Chip and Monterey and said, look, I know how Dale feels. I know where he's coming from. So you know what? We're going to help him. We're going to make him live his dream. We're going to play this little game. And I love how even though it was originally intended to be a little game, it turns into a real adventure and they end up having to take on some real life spies and, or bad guys or renegade spies or whatever. And I love how they have to do that and stop them. I love that. I mean, there's not much more I can say about this. I mean, it's such a great episode. It's so good. It's so well done. And, you know, I love the interaction when Gadget puts on the disguise. And also, like I said, it's, it's full of first. It's full of first. And I was going to talk about the interaction, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But I love how it's full of first because it's the first time we see, like I said, it's the first time we see an intelligent side of Dale. And it's the first time, if you're a fan of Gadget, it's the first time you see her out of her normal coveralls, her normal overalls and goggles. It's the first time you see her as an actual feminine female with the bracelets, with the necklace, the bracelet, the high heels, the makeup, the red dress, the, well, the addition of the wig, and the sensuality, the sexuality she had out of it, or sensuality. It was just so well done. And, you know, a lot of people, again, just like with carpet snaggers, a lot of people might say that this was, again, Disney's way of hinting at the fact then maybe they wanted to go in the direction of Gadget and Dale if things had gone, you know, even further. Things had gone according to plan, like let's say when it comes to a movie. Or come to the movie, if you know what I mean. But I love how they, they I mean, I love how everything was just done so well here. And I love how, da and, and the fact that Dale, Dale does show, finally, Chip finally sees, I love how Chip finally sees that Dale is probably taught, probably, making sense. Maybe he does have some ideas. Maybe there is more to my best friend than just the silliness and the goofiness. I love that. Uh, let me check my time here. Okay, I've got about a minute and a half to go, but I love, I love that. I, I love how that interaction comes out. I love it. I mean, I love that, you know, not re interaction, but I love that realization on Chip. Like, his best friend probably is more than you know, probably more to his best friend than he thinks. And the interaction's great. I mean, I love how Gadget plays her femme fatale role to the heel. You know, it's really, really cool. I love how Dale starts to play along with them when he finds out it's a game, and then he has to finally adjust to the fact that, okay, it's not a game anymore, it's the real-life deal. It's time to take care of business. I love that. It's really great. I love how Gadget distracts one of the bad guys with her femme fatale act, and it is just a great episode. Very well done. Not, not much more I can say about it. And that is why Double O Chipmunk is my number one favorite Rescue Ranger episode of all time. And that is my top ten favorite Chippendale Rescue Ranger episodes of all time. Hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below. Tell me what you think. Peace out. Sorry this was in two parts.